Hello everyone, I am Avantika Tansal and you are watching New India Junction. Today we are going to talk about Women Reservation Bill which has been recently passed in Parliament. And we have a group of lovely ladies with us uh, who have joined us today and we will be discussing about this. So I would request them to uh, introduce themselves, starting from here. Hi everyone, I am Srishti Khanna, I am a practicing advocate for the Delhi High Court and Supreme Court of course. And uh, I'm of course, I am amongst a very distinguished panel. But I'm an infant here, I would like to say. But thank you so much for having me. Hi, I'm Sumit and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer for InfoEdge India. We're known for our brands like Nokri, 99 Acres, Jeevan Sathi and Shiksha. And it's great to be on this panel today. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Ekta and I'm a Founder Director Humanizing Lives and we work on emotional and mental well-being. Great. So, as you are aware of that Women Reservation Bill 2023, proposes to have 33% uh, seats reserved uh, in Lok Sabha and state assemblies for the women. So starting with that, what are your uh, views on that women reservation bill being passed in uh, parliament after such a long time, after 27 years? It was tabled on 19th September. On 20th September, uh, it was uh, approved in Lok Sabha and uh, on 21st September, Without even a single vote against it, it was up, uh, approved in Rajya Sabha. So, what are your views on uh, Women Reservation Bill? It's about time that women are in the in the most significant law-making uh, house of the country. And considering the fact that we um, have a lot of dynamic issues that the country is going through, the voice of the woman is very, very crucial and significant at this time. So it's about time that uh, this happened and uh, how amazing that it took a special session, a new building uh, yes. to actually get it done. Because uh, as far as I can recall, it was 1974 when uh, the UN had actually sought a report from um, India that, you know, what is the gender equality status of the country? And the result was uh, very dismal, very poor. And after so many years, after 27 years of so much deliberation, it is finally here. So it's it's uh, it's historic. So uh, Shrishti, like you said, uh, the percentage is was very low at that point in time. Currently also, if we see the highest percentage in parliament, which has uh, been there for women um, uh, taking participation in parliament is 14% highest. It has been around 8 to 10%. And also we are compared with our neighboring countries like Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Pan, uh, they have uh, more uh, percentage of women in the parliament representing. So what are your views on that? No, I think like Srishti said, uh, this is, uh, it should have happened long time ago. I think so. We are already late, but thank God it's happened, you know. So thankfully to the current regime that they've been able to manage because I think we've had a lot of failed attempts. A yes. couple of years, the bill has been tabled, but there's been opposition. So it's great to see that they've managed to kind of pass it without any opposition. And it's better late than never, right? And as you rightly said, I mean, you know, if you take countries like Pakistan and Bangladesh, even the South Asian countries are at about 20%, 21% of women representation, which is in any ways is low. But for a country like India, you would expect, which is so much progressive otherwise, and you now would kind of expect this percentage to yeah. be much higher, yes. right? Yes. So, yeah, no, I mean, thank God now. it's come. What I think it's the most progressive bill which has ever come. Because, you know, of course, we see India, we have a lot of women leaders. But to have a woman leaders in the parliament, you know, who decide for you. Yeah. And I, you really don't want men to decide about your reproductive rights, your human rights, your uh, safety. Because they don't come from that experience to know what is right for you, right? It's only when women are there in the leadership space in that parliament, they'll be able to decide that what is right for you and how the bill should be made and what not to be made, what should be there, you know, which is really helpful for us because... There is a gender gap in the parliament. A lot of times, you know, that thing decided for us is not what we want. It's, it's coming from so there. There should be more yeah, women exactly, representation. Exactly. And for that, the step has been taken. Taken oh, finally. Yes. Five yes. Grace. So uh, this uh, takes me to my next point, uh, which is about uh, women development, rather women-led development, which uh, we are focusing uh, right now, which uh, is basically uh, the India is focusing right now. So what are your views, if I have to ask, you know, changes that you have seen in the last 9, 10 years, prominent changes which you feel that, you know, this has happened, that has happened, this is something which I, I have myself witnessed. 
So anything like that. Yeah, so I, I actually come from a male-dominated profession. The profession itself, you know, the lobby of the court is majorly enveloped in, in male lawyers. And there is, of course, a very subtle misogyny that each woman has to go through in their lives. But uh, what I've actually experienced in the last four years of my professional experience, so to say, is that women reservation is probably one of the key tools that people have used, like the, the parliament has used to make it a reality, a tangible reality. But women are everywhere. We are making sure that we are seen. We are now, uh, we are heard. So that itself being um, welcomed in the society, you know, we're trying to basically put our foot down and be there. So that itself is one of the greatest of clarion calls, so to say, that we are here and you're going to make a change. So that has happened, I feel, more than any. Also, uh, sex ratio has gone up. Yeah. It is now 1,020 females. Because female per... side has gone down. Yes, per 1,000 males. So yes, of course, that has happened under Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao campaign. So any remarks on that? So, of course, if you see, that's what the statistic was. So, women are, nowadays, women are more qualified, you know, as compared to the male counterparts nowadays. And women are also making uh, more bigger decisions. They're also entering into the more leadership areas. And a lot of the companies are also looking for women to join the leadership areas because they know women are multitasking. <laughs> and, you know, they can, the managerial skill, which we learn from the very beginning, like, you know, we're supposed to learn, manage yeah. house, look after the brother or, you know, your parents, everything. It, you know, it accumulates as one of the best leaders, managerial skills, which you also implement when you go into the company. And, you know, like you were saying about the development, one thing I really felt great was having a finance minister as a woman. Because usually it's supposed, you know, you yeah. women are not very financially yes. intelligent yeah. or independent. You don't take any financial decisions at home because you're just not involved in the discussion yes. because that's not your area. And then we have a fi like a woman who's a finance yes. minister, so she yes. was the big yes. change. Yeah. Like you know, you're just breaking breaking the entire stereotypical thought that okay, she's managing the entire finance of the country. How can you in not include us in the financial discussion of the houses? You know, so yeah, and no, you know, I think in the last decade or so, some of the changes that I notice around me is one, I think a very big um, thing where women are being educated. Yeah. Right, yeah. you know. And, you know, while in the metros, we live in these ivory walls and we think the world is the 2% of people that we interact with. If you really go to villages and I belong to a village, so I do visit that village once in two years, sometimes once in a year. It is amazing to see how over the last eight to ten years, every girl is a graduate. Yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think that is very empowering because everything starts with education. Empowerment will come if you're educated. You will ask for your rights. You will do better decision making if all this happens. So I feel at the grassroots level, a lot of that has happened. Mm -hmm. The other two, three things I think that um, the government has been able to do is tie up with for example, there was that huge program called Google Internet Sathi, right? Tie up. We're about to yeah. ask you about, you know, uh, how uh, how do you see uh, digital India uh, pitching to this kind yeah. of empowerment? So, you know, so I think the government's trying to do that, right? I mean, you at the because it's very important to do it at the grassroots levels. A lot of us are from the privileged classes. We go to the best schools. We go to the best universities. We can buy our iPads and iPhones as soon as the new version comes. But unless change is really made at the grassroots level, yes. I don't think it will really come up. So I yeah. I kind of feel that the governments and the private sector, I see it as a great partnership because we've seen a lot of programs, you know, where people are going to the grassroots level, to villages, to empower, to teach, to digitally make yes. people, you know, uh, know things. And, and, and we're seeing it through the panchayats. We're seeing I was it, you know. going to say Yeah, that I mean, that was... was... While I was working with National Human Rights Commission, we've been to... A lot of UP villages to look into it, like the woman panchayat thing which came up. Yeah. Reserved seat, keep connect. You have to have a woman panchayat in the village. That has changed a lot of things. Women panchayats were more successful than the male panchayats. Corporate boards, yeah. I mean, the government has mandated now corporate boards to have women, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, otherwise, it's very, you know, women do bring in diversity, and I think we all they acknowledge that, right? And you bring, you bring most, in diversity. They bring most importantly, they also bring a lot of inclusivity, which, you know, which you don't see otherwise. I mean, they would go to your home, have a cup of chai, which I saw while I was 
on my work on the ground they would visit your home they'll sit they'll have chat they'll ask you okay you're fine is amanwari working good how uh, how like how many months are you pregnant what is it due date look small small things so just because a woman panchayat everything came up at a very right space or this ang- anganwadi or whatever so like you mentioned now uh, pregnancy this reminds me of the maternity policy yeah. which has changed from 12 yeah. weeks to 26 weeks today right? not sure if uh, any one of you or maybe you know anyone in your family probably has gone through that uh, uh, time when they had probably 12 weeks leave because i've seen my friends they had 12 weeks leave then so you did i when you fix a weeks yeah. leave and the kind of uh, relief they had the judgments which are coming nowadays being yeah. a lawyer was saying you know like So it's okay to if a single mother can adopt a child even during the cases like rapes you know the medical term medical termination of pregnancy at certain we i mean i we have such progressive judgments coming from even on uh, uh, triple talaq triple yes yeah. i mean i mean that's a big one right and that also demonstrates inclusivity so because you're not yes. because you're yeah. doing it specially for for the women maybe you know yeah. for the women and also from a, a particular religious sect which definitely required this as well right a lot of people that you talk to kind of uh, we finally entering the that was the belief thoughts yeah at least that you should say we could down the thoughts you know finally yeah. entering that also there have been many uh, other changes uh, in nda i mean it is the first batch oh. of the cadets the uh, women cadets yeah. which yeah. has now Trained. been trained in nda so any yeah. views on that well i mean my only views are that I think women are required in every field mm-hmm. because they bring in a different angle of thinking, right? Yeah. As as she was saying, they bring in compassion, they bring in empathy, they bring in a diverse viewpoint, which I think anybody benefits yeah. from, right? Uh, and now to kind of make sure that, and there were a lot of professions and lot of things that were not, you know, you were conditioned firstly. you know thinking that oh you can't jump you can't do this you can't do that and your boys and your brothers and your sons were okay if they had hurt but if you had hurt it was created into a big thing as well right you know ke nahi beta you should not do this you should come home at this time etc etc so i think breaking stereotypes is very important because if you talk to so many young women especially the ones who actually gone into nda this first batch and i have had the because i come from an army background i've had the privilege of meeting two and they just feel so empowered because they are like they are so glad that we are getting an opportunity to wear the same hat and hackle that our fathers were you know why oh, can't we take this legacy this forward so empowering you know yeah. so i'm sure it is very very empowering and especially for the one who is actually yeah. going and getting trained absolutely i think you women know. are also you know they're like in a space and a time where they're realizing their own potential that i can do it and if somebody says you can't then they definitely do it and show it that they know i can do it i think that i think women have recognized their potential for a long time it's not, not that women are recognizing their potential in there well that's no, now coming to the right. fact that yeah. you know we are very very yeah. capable and i think laws like this have to be passed right so yeah. that you force only get women on so that others can see that potential and acknowledge that potential yeah. it makes it yeah. much easier also but so that you have reservation yeah. bill is like it's like that uh, that stone that you've carved if there's a carving in the stone that okay you know like this is where we are and we are here to stay yeah it's more like we go to the cow and down here now we can now take our own decisions decisions now yes we are part of this oh uh, yeah even uh, we have a uh, president who is yes, uh, the young kids and and the young young yes. one yes and yes. from a tribal back and coming from a tribal back around yeah, yeah. and uh, also there are many other things like bu- budget allocation has gone up by 1.5 times i mean if education It's, programs are going yeah. well you're also seeing that a lot of uh, interest free loans are being given at the yeah. rural yeah. uh, level to women you know uh I don't know I mean I hope women are utilizing it and it's not the men taking a loan on the women's name I don't no, know no. but uh, definitely those schemes are there but def- I can definitely tell you in the white collar space um you know if we look at Neeti Aayog etc yes uh, you know which is giving a lot of boost to entrepreneurship mm. and very often women do feel that you know enough VCs don't fund us mm. right you know they kind of feel that that doesn't mean that women ventures are not getting funded but, but we have specialized by now, now we have a start of india yeah. under which uh, till now uh, 33500 crore rupees have been given to women uh, for a business uh, starting from 10 lakhs to 1 crore yeah which is a great thing right? yeah you know We're because financial the, aid is the, really you know, important has, uh, the highest voters were also women no okay yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
also uh, what uh, how do you see digital india benefiting uh, maybe empowering women you too i mean i see a lot of women you know if you see instagram they're doing their cooking videos they're running their cloud kitchen they all they make up tutorials they all are earning money out of youtube instagram everything and of course the education has reached to your home you don't need to go out of your home you know you can there's so many websites i think as women we yeah. have an inherent skill set it yeah so that finally has come to service uh, surface and now we're able to monetize and gain the laser you just and of course so digital in india of course i mean for the longest time there were a lot of people in my family who were not able to use upi they were never able to make their own payments the fact that they they have the ability to make uh, their own payment and buy things for themselves that itself is so very empowering and i believe that everything that is happening in digitization has really given a conduit to the potential of the woman hmm. like you know finally she wasn't able to share it with everybody around her but she has the space where she can she can actually share and also be embraced and acknowledged and complimented and probably even monetize it so that space that digital india has brought about for the woman is absolutely incredible it's insane yeah. and of and they have their financial <laughs> control also because of that a lot you know it's not there yeah and i have one more point to make and i kind of feel that what uh digital india has done and more so uh actually telecom started it right which is mobile yeah because the women in villages the the women who work in our houses right uh the male member yeah. is the member who was connected with say whatever friends family women could not go home uh women always even now a lot of women continue to travel only with a male escort you know uh to their whatever to their micas etc once they are married that is all no changing avanta it's changing but it's there right so we have to acknowledge it right and i think what is important is what digital india has done is it has brought data hmm. to phones where now i can video call and talk to my mom i can video call and talk to my son who is maybe in delhi working hmm. you know and i'm sitting in a village somewhere in up or bihar or northeast or wherever hmm. i think that for a woman is also very empowering just hmm. pure pay communication mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. because a woman we were always empowered to communicate right but there were a lot of women who were not even allowed to communicate because there were no means of communication so easily It's right so besides different. from all yeah. this you know which is i mean payments etc yeah. great but i think even that whole piece of letting somebody now oh, you know yeah, talk to somebody who didn't have all the power added to their and this uh, empowerment still that this conversation to the women reservation bill when women will actually come in the parliament and raise these issues yeah. that is when we'll have progressive legislations yeah that is when we'll be able to have uh conversations deliberations debates on how we actually need to take action at the grassroots level right now we are sitting and talking about how it is significantly changed over the course of the years imagine what lies ahead just imagine what yeah. lies ahead absolutely yeah. and of course it's a far fetched road right now also so now that it the uh, bill was passed on the 20th of september but considering the dynamics the census and the delimitation we are only looking at 26 or 29 when this will actually get implemented so change travels at a snail pace but change is constant but, uh, yeah it is constant change is constant and the biggest thing is that it has been passed so earlier yes. what we saw in yeah. 2010 it was passed in rajya sabha but you know it was kept hanging in uh, lok sabha and yeah. got amended and it was then uh, expired so now at least it has been passed in both the houses yeah. passed in yes. parliament so at least it will definitely be we know that it will come in your execution it's going yes. to come and chingan just looking at there. how bright the future is going to be yeah. yeah that that actually sounds so optimistic and so actually very bright <laughs> So, anything else that you would like to add on, or um, probably from uh, regular lives that you have come across, maybe not yours, maybe your, uh, maybe your kids' life, you, uh, or your cousins, your friends, anyone else. So, one thing that I must share actually is that I also uh, do a lot of pro bono work with migrant and refugee women, and uh, considering that their their situations are they already are very vulnerable. you know as people so their situation becomes all the more difficult mm-hmm. to fight so it's very very important that women are getting educated girls are taking finally taking a step for themselves taking a stand for themselves it's very very important that women are aware of their rights 
women are aware they educate themselves of what the statute provides them not misuse them but what yeah. what the statute provides them so of course there is a there is a very thin line on use and abuse that is there but that's a human dilemma that we all go through but i believe understanding rights understanding their enforceability and winning in daily life yes yeah? not restricting ourselves because we're aware we're aware of you know uh what we can do what 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 um, kind of impact that we can create it's it's insane when you come to terms with your potential it's you can't unsee it once you see your potential you really can't unsee it yeah it, it, uh, absolutely once you know something you it is yeah cannot be undone from your mind yeah so i think educating oneself about the rights and uh, yeah i think that's that's about it that's one concrete point that each one of us should work on you know there are a lot of people who don't know what their rights are their legal awareness yeah. is not there so i think coming from that standpoint because there are 10000 more things that we can discuss but one of them is this you know i just feel that uh it's a pity that you know even today in most parts of the world actually uh, women need laws to be passed because what we because the outside world is not ready to accept as she was saying that you have the potential you have the decision making power etc etc um and we've seen it you know starting with corporate boards as, as i was telling you i think it is very it's i feel that the bill is monumental because what women want eventually is not quota women know that they have potential they want to progress because of the performance and the potential that they get right but uh, you need to sensitize the men right you need to build an inclusive environment to even recognize that potential and i think therefore it's very very monumental and commendable i think when it was passed even for corporate boards it was commendable because there are so many so many women in corporate india right who would not go to board positions right but they would be performing very very well till these till such regulations come in you well you know you uh, get avenues to then show your potential yeah. and for the world to start recognizing them and as a woman i kind of feel what you want is sensitization a lot of us who are sitting here on this chair those of us who are married have to give a lot of credit to that for our spouses as well right because we are supported with men who are all right for us to kind of go and have progressive careers similarly men are supported by their spouses right who allow them to go so i think that sensitization and mindset of acceptability and potential is very important and these kind of things are extremely important for that to get recognized because first women need a platform where at least you can come you know and demonstrate right your potential be part of as she said yeah, very no, important you know like, laws and legislations it's like now you don't have to at least fight for that right you have a right and now in the end unhindered go on your yes. path without thinking ki you know this also i have to do to reach there so actually when we achieve something we don't really define our worth we actually realize our worth yes exactly yeah. so women are like finally what? realizing their worth they're coming to terms with it and now it's the world's time to you know open their eyes and come to terms with it i think that's yeah now what i have to say is you know this bill has empowered i'm sure most of the women who were sitting in the drawing room and watching tv because finally they can feel that okay my representation is there huh. was going to talk about it to me was going to put my point on the table before it was not there yeah. actually so it's not just empowerment for those percentage of women who are sitting in the parliament it's empowerment for the women at large who are sitting in the drawing room or someone who's cooking in the kitchen or somebody who's just doing any random work or maybe for you and for you for yeah. all of us because as we don't have that space you know to go and talk we will be represented we are being represented that there's someone standing there who's talking about yeah. our rights what we need and how we need so that's empowering not just for those quota of percentage of women sitting in the parliament but it's empowering for women at large for everybody so that's the beauty of this bill i think i can just say more to women power you know <laughs> i think so there's uh, this is beautiful it's momentous and it's uh, actually we are really uh, fortunate that these things are happening but we still have long way to go we should not just be happy at 
Oh wow! There's too many things. Yeah, yeah. But just my beginning. The, 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 the journey is yeah. started. Journey has started. started. Yeah. One step at a time. Yeah. And we women are never satisfied with such small things. So I think we have more, 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 and more. No, you know there are so many policies, so many schemes which are implemented on the ground level. Like there is Ujwala Yojana, where uh, women um, and uh, the backward people who don't have uh, gas cylinders, they have mm. provided gas cylinders. Then there is uh, Swachh Abhiyan. You guys we might know. be aware of Swachh Abhiyan. Yeah, we've gone to insect toilets also in NHRC. Yeah, so uh, Swachh Abhiyan is there, and uh, almost uh, more than eleven crore families have been benefited out. Yeah, because there are banking schemes yeah. also, you know, for yeah. uh, like uh, there is Sukanya Samrithi, Samrithi, and all that happened. Yeah, and also Mahila Savings Scheme, which came in this budget only, which uh, up till now is the most successful, where you have to. Deposit a minimum and maximum amount, but the yeah. rate of interest is highest. Yeah, in that, so they're men finally, finally working yeah. towards realizing the sustainable development goals of gender equality. Yes, yeah, and yeah. that is what we're doing now. Yeah, we're taking baby steps. We're working towards it, mm -hmm. and now I think what what used to be a far fetched goal for a lot of people when you used to study, huh. you know, we're never gonna get equal before equal work. We're never gonna yeah. get that. We always to think to ourselves, you know, just to dream. <laughs> Was to uh, was to you know was to gaslight ourselves. Oh no, you can't. Why you were in college? But, yeah. Okay. So I I believe that doing these you know these these campaigns these schemes are like those stepping stones towards actually coming on the world platform because people are looking at India. India is now the most populous country. It has the greatest youth population. Mm. Yeah, and the women of India are. Of course, amazing, beautiful, but they are very, 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 very potential. Yes, yes potential. but also uh, India on World's platform, it is the uh, fifth largest economy as of now. Correct, we are I know. Striving for to become the third largest economy. We are also striving to become a developed nation by twenty forty seven. Any take on that? I'm sure we'll get there. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think it's great to see India yeah. taking such bold decisions on the world. Hmm. You know, I mean, the way. Uh, things have been happening around us without naming a lot of things, but you know the way we handled the entire pandemic through our vaccination program. Yes, fact, right? You know, it's a global exam. And then handle the G20 summit here. You know, oh, yeah. yes, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So when we find an all about our... we are seeing and feeling and touching the elephant in the room. Yeah. <laughs> the world is noticing India, which yeah. is great. Yeah. You know, so everything is know. falling in India. Yeah, it's potential. Yeah. When we, you know, come uh, to this topic. Uh, of uh, how well India is doing, I think there are a lot of points which probably we can cover in the next. Now we are not never in non optimism, maybe then you know. Yeah, yes. yeah. Half an hour will not be enough. For that. <laughs> so thanks a lot for participating and giving us your precious, valuable time. This is it for today's video. Do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to New India Junction. This is Avantika Tansal signing off. Until next time.